Hey, what's going on guys? Butterbar here. Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be going over the create a class system that we got to see during the reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I want to give you guys my opinion really about the perks that we're going to be seeing in the create a class and how balanced it might actually be when this game gets released. I have to say I'm very surprised on where these perks are laid out at. Will we be seeing new perks? I don't know. Maybe more will get introduced. I know this is just the alpha that we saw uh, with this uh, reveal, but from what it looks like the layout of the perks look really nice the wild cards look really cool i want to go over that give you guys my opinion about what i think about that then also too lastly we're going to talk about the gunsmith talk about all these weapons that are being introduced um that at least are you know we got to see during the alpha give you guys my opinion about what i think about the different attachments now actually showing percentages um to where you can actually calculate some of the stuff up to where you can have the best possible role that you can uh in this game it looks really good i'm, I'm happy to see that the gunsmith is making return uh and also, too, man, that a freaking wild card gives you eight attachments instead of five is pretty crazy to me. So, okay, let's talk about the critic class first, and let's talk about the perks. Everybody kind of looks at the critic class. You already know you're going to get primary, secondary, all this stuff. Let's talk about the perks. Let's break down exactly where uh, people are going to be trying to build out their loadout for uh, this game. So, let's talk about tier one. So, tier one in the perks, we have engineer, flag jacket, and tactical mask. Now, again, these are perks that people have seen previously in other Call of Duty games out there, but... It's good to kind of see where tier one kind of lays out at with the different types of perks that are in that engineer. You're going to be detecting enemy equipment, score streaks through walls, see enemy score streaks uh, on the mini map and reroll care packages. That's actually one thing I really love uh, about engineer. That's one thing I think is really cool. Flak jacket. I feel like I'm probably going to be rolling that the most um, that you're taking reduced damage from enemy explosives as well as molotovs, tactical mass, resistant, um, resistance to flash grenades as well as stun grenades and immune to smoke. So or I guess immune to gas. So again, I, I like the way that tier one's looking out at it. Lo it looks like it's some type of deterrent or some type of awareness to the map of different, uh, you know, equipment and score streaks and stuff like that. Tier one looks really good. I like to see that. And it looks like tier one's going to be a really balanced out uh, way of, do you want more protection from explosives, you know, a tactical grenades, or do you want to have a little bit more awareness on the map? So I like that. I like that. Tier one is looking good. Tier two. Okay, let's talk about this. Quartermaster, Scavenger, and Tracker. Quartermaster recharges equipment over 25 seconds. I know that was in Modern Warfare, um, the, I guess the remake, the, uh, or, or the, I guess the newest one, the one that was made last year, uh, there was a perk in there where you, I guess it was restock, where you got, uh, you know, your equipment re, um, recharged for, uh, you know, I think it was 20 seconds, 25 seconds, something like that. So it's pretty similar. similar. Scavenger, replenish ammo from Fallen. We've already known that. Scavenger's been in a Call of Duty game since, God, what? Uh, what Modern Warfare 2, maybe? Gotta trying to like look back and see like when the last time or when when was the first time scavenger was introduced tracker seeing imprinted enemy footsteps and aim at enemies to reveal them on their team's mini map. Now we've had a tracker perks uh in other Call of Duty games out there, but I do actually have to say that aiming at enemies to reveal them on the mini map, uh, I like that. I might actually be rolling with that one because I mean if you're giving more awareness to your your teammates uh and making sure that they're prepared for a fight that might be coming their way. I think that's really great to see. So again, looking at tier two, it looks really good. And I'm happy to see to where these perks are kind of lining up at. Now, tier three is where it's it's where you're kind of probably going to see people are going to be struggling a little bit to kind of pick exactly which one they want to carry with them. Now, cold-blooded ghost and ninja is making a return to a perk. Can you imagine that? How crazy is that? So cold-blooded, we all know. AI-controlled score streaks will not target you. Player-controlled score streaks will not highlight you undetected, undetectable to, on thermal scopes. Players and vehicles won't see your nameplate. So, again, very similar to the way we've seen Cold-Blooded in other Call of Duty games. All right, so now let's go on to Ghost. And now Ghost, oh my god, I love it. I love to see that Ghost is getting, it's getting a little bit of balance. Something that is lacking in Modern Warfare. But I'm happy to see that Ghost is actually getting knocked down a little bit. But it's still going to be useful. So, Ghost, undetectable by enemy spy planes when you're moving. When you're moving. Yes! No more camping in a corner with ghosts. Fantastic. I love to see it. Planning or defusing bombs or controlling score streaks. Look, ghost is super OP in Modern Warfare. So it's nice to know that it's going to be getting knocked down a couple of pegs uh, in Black Ops Cold War. And it's nice to know that's exactly where ghost should be at. Ninja. Here we go, baby. Sprint more quietly resistant to field mic field grade. And we'll actually get up to that. Um, 
it's nice to see it, man. It's nice to see that uh, that ninja's coming back, and we are going to be able to quietly maneuver around the map. And we weren't going to be, we're not going to be stomping around in our standard issue clogs, making sure everybody knows exactly where we're at. So I'm happy to see that. And I'm good. I'm, it's it's awesome. Tier three is a great way to kind of give a little bit of competition to, among the perks. So it's really nice to see kind of where uh, where the perks line up at. I'm really happy about the where all the perks are at. So great job with doing that but we'll see when the beta comes out maybe it'll change i don't know maybe my opinion will change all right let's talk about the wild cards some of these wild cards in here man at least from the reveal and the alpha woo, are really nice and then on some of them i'm like oh, i'm a little concerned by this just a little bit so danger close spawn with max ammo and one extra lethal and tactical equipment um I will say this, I'm just a little nervous by that. Not not by the max ammo or anything. I, I'm, I'm just nervous about grenade spam and whatnot. I'm thinking back all the way to like Modern Warfare back in 07 or 08. Um, and just grenade spam being just ridiculous. So, um, Danger Close looks cool, but I'm a little hesitant on the extra lethals and whatnot. But maybe it'll all play out. You know, throw some tack, throw a, throw a flak jacket on, you might be okay. Gunfighter. Gunfighter looks really badass because you're having, a, you're allowed to have eight attachments on your primary weapon instead of five dude you're gonna be able to kit out your weapon just freaking it's good it, it, like the funny thing is like i'm thinking real life like that like eight attachments on your rifle it's like it, it probably weighs like 50 pounds and you're like trying to aim it's like it's so goddamn heavy man <laughs> so but that's cool gunfighter looks like a really cool cool uh, perk to have onto your weapon um and it's gonna be crazy to see, you know, when we go back over to the gunsmith of just seeing what attachments are gonna be working perfectly for you, um, and where you're actually able to build it to where your weapon is just like a dominating machine, uh, uh in in multiplayer. So lawbreaker, equip any weapon in either slot, allowing for two primaries or even two secondaries, and equip any three perks regardless of their tiers. So I feel like you're gonna be seeing a lot of lawbreaker just because one, you're gonna be able to carry. Two different primaries, sniper rifle, AR, you know, what whatever it might be. Um, but also when it comes to the perks, because I think you're gonna be seeing a lot of ghost and ninja. I think that I think that's what you're gonna see, but I could be wrong, but I think that's the way that people are going to be playing. So it's probably either going to be Lawbreaker or it's going to be Perk Greed, which is the, is the last one, the last wild card, at least it was in the alpha. Now, Perk Greed is equip extra three extra perks, uh, one from each tier. So again, you'll be able to get Ghost and Ninja together. Um, so again, between Lawbreaker and Perk Greed, it's going to be, I don't know, what what do you want? Do you want um, to carry a, two a, additional you know primary weapons or do you want to have perks? I don't know what it might be, but you know what? I'm gonna We're going to be seeing some competition between these wild cards and kind of seeing where uh players are going to be at when it comes to you know what do you want what do you want your loadout uh to be all right lastly before we go over to the gunsmith let's talk about these field upgrades now again we've had field upgrades previously in other call of duty games um especially kind of going over back to modern warfare from uh, of 2019 um where we have there are you know equipment that you can take in there like the ammo box stopping power and stuff like that recon drones and stuff so the field upgrades that we're going to be seeing right now at least from the alpha is you have the field mic um it has a charge time of 195 seconds and deployable recording device which highlights enemy sounds on your mini map so this pretty much is just a miniature radar that you are able to you know it just it gives you a little cone a little circle on the map that it that it protects or that monitors and you're going to be seeing little uh, little dots and whatnot but again also remember too that dead silence actually counters this as well so just kind of give you guys a heads up when, when the beta comes out jammer jammer's been in other call of duty games out there so it's cool to kind of see it coming back charge time 150 seconds deployable jammer which um disables enemy field upgrades and degrades any mini map with it when in its ao uh you know what I, I i that'll be interesting look disabling any field upgrades when it comes to like the sam turret or the proxy mine or, i mean even the field mic that will be kind of cool a little bit of a counter to the other perks so uh how many people are going to be running the jammer hell i might actually run the jammer over all these other ones it, it has a, a it's a pretty pretty good little little uh time to recharge but uh man the fact that it disables field upgrades that's gonna be that's gonna be really nice proxy mine so again this has 120 seconds so two minutes uh throwable mine which explodes shortly after an enemy runs or drives over it 
does not uh, detect crouched enemies. So you're able to actually sneak past this thing. I know there are other Call of Duty games. You, you, you're not actually able to sneak behind, uh, sneak by these things. Um, but again, that's going to be your, kind of a cool thing. That's going to actually be the shortest time uh, that you get, which is 120 seconds. Lastly, let's talk about the Sam turret. This is the one that has me super nervous because, you know, for somebody that is myself, love the helicopter, love the chopper gun and stuff like that. How much is this Sam turret going to be like a big bother to me? So... 225 seconds, uh, so it's going to be a hot minute before you actually get this deployed, but a deployable turret which uh, launches missiles and enemy uh, score streaks and aircraft. So, I mean, I, I guess it's great. There is a counter, but I'm not a huge fan of it whatsoever. Kind of going back to Black Ops 4 where it was really easy to take down some of the different... Uh, different score streaks and, and whatnot that you could get up there that just would be down so damn fast. So... It, is it going to be good to see a counter? I guess, but I'm not a huge fan of it whatsoever, and I think it's going to be kind of lame. All right, let's go over to the Gunsmith. Now, the Gunsmith is, again, returning from Modern Warfare, which I think was a big... I, I think everybody really enjoyed the Gunsmith. I think it was, like, one thing that everybody really enjoyed, being able to customize your weapon, being able to throw on these all these different types of attachments, um, and seeing how you can actually customize your weapon to benefit you in the battlefield. So... Real quick, before we actually get into that, let's talk about some of the weapons that were in these alphas. So, primary weapons, you have the AK-74U, the MP5, the Type 8, um, 821. Now, those are all SMGs. For the assault rifles, you have the XM4, uh, which is the commando for people that played Black Ops 1. The Krig 6, AK-47, M16, Type 63. The RPD is coming back. The Stoner's coming back. Uh, you have the Tundra sniper rifle, um, and you have the 703 um, sniper rifle as well. Secondary weapons, 1911. Um, actually, shotguns, I'm not going to lie. Wow. Even like this, I guess the Spaz has been changed. It's the SA-12. Um, but it's nice to see that shotguns are going to be making a return to the secondary. That'll be kind of cool to see how that plays out in multiplayer. But I think I might be carrying a shotgun. And the last thing, you, they had a launcher, um, a rocket launcher for it. All right. Now let's talk about the gunsmith. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see how this plays out because not only with being able to do the five attachments you know, like previously in Modern Warfare, uh, but it actually tells you in percentage the pros and cons of equipping this. Now in Modern Warfare, it doesn't really tell you percentages and whatnot, um, but in this, it will give you a percentage on where you're sitting at with your weapons, with the attachments. I think that's going to work out great for somebody that wants to take the numbers in, be able to work it to the best possible, uh, you know, way of having your weapon perfect. Um, I think that's good. I think that's really good news. It's going to be cool to see all the different types of loadouts people are going to be able to have. They have the most perfect tuned in, tuned up, tuned in, whatever, uh, AR or SMG, LMG, whatever it might be, uh, to see the all different types of combinations. And I imagine people on YouTube will have all different types of builds going out when it comes to all the different attachments. And the fact too, a wild card gives you three more extra attachments. So I mean, five might be okay, but if you're able to put on eight, oh my God, that thing is going to be freaking a machine. It's going to be a monster. I, I don't know. Maybe. Could be wrong. I don't know. I would at least think that more perks makes it a little bit better, but I might be wrong. But it's, again, really cool to see, like, there's so many things from the barrels, the stock, um, the, you know, barrel attachments. You have underbarrel. You have the magazine. You have the trigger. You have uh, sights. You have all these different types of things. Handguard. I mean, good lord. There's so many different... Um, things to attach onto your weapon that uh, it's giving you a lot of customizable things to do. So, um, yeah, this is really great. It's really cool to see all the different things that are going to be uh, allowing you to customize the weapon the way that you want to um, in this game. And you're going to be able to see in percentages the cost and benefit of what you're doing to your weapon. So, guys, I just at least wanted to give you guys my opinion about what I thought about the creative class, what did I think about the gunsmith, all the weapons that are being put into this game so far in this alpha. Um, but yeah, man, I I have to say I, I'm I'm oh, man, how do I how do I say this? Cuz I don't I don't I'm, my intention is not to overhype it. Um, I look forward to seeing where this game stands out at with all the other Call of Duty games. Um, I'll say this, I'm, I'll probably make this, I'll probably do a different video, I'm tired of Modern Warfare, um, I would like a different game, um, and I'm wanting to know, does it get better than this, I don't know, I think the thing that sucks about everything is that we always get excited for the next Call of Duty game out there, but is it really better than the, than the last one that we played, who knows, but 
I'm optimistic. Hopefully this goes well with this new Call of Duty game. Creative class looks really good with the perks uh, and the wound cards. Gunsmith looks really good with being able to see exactly what you're doing to your weapon. Um, and I want to remain optimistic. So, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please have a great rest of the day. Let me know in the comments below what do you guys think about the creative class system, the perks, as well as the gunsmith being brought back to, uh, or I guess being brought over from Modern Warfare into Black Ops Cold War. So, let me know in the comments below. Guys, have a great rest of the day. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.